couple of years ago, I started the uh, Center for the Advancement of Nonprofit and Faith-Based Organization at the uh, California State University, Dominguez Hills, uh, with the purpose of helping nonprofit and faith-based organizations look at the trends and to be ahead of change. Little did we know that at that time, the changes that are now operational would be so vast and have such tremendous impact uh, on the sector. Um, changes are always occurring. They have always been occurring, ever since man hit the face of the earth with been screwing things up. Uh, do the changes needed today require a new type of leader? And what we're finding is yes, particularly uh, in this sector because things look normal and stable, but underneath they are not. Uh, your income stream is always at risk. Are there ways to prevent that from happening? We think there are ways. Well, yesterday's leadership tools serve the leaders of tomorrow. And what we're finding so far is absolutely not. If the paradigm that we used to use is changing so rapidly, what we know has to change rapidly, and how we do what we've been doing has to change. Now, Tim's new program is a fantastic program to help you stay abreast of the changes. We are in a whole, we've talked before about the 21st century. We had no idea the 21st century would start off the way it did. So I would uh, urge you that whatever your previous degrees are, if you have one, in uh, the nonprofit field, it isn't so much the degrees that count as how big your heart is. Well, now we need a big heart and a sheepskin just to stay up with the change. Will social and economic indicators used in the past serve us in the near term? Uh, I think we find that no. And um, there's a couple of reasons for that. If you'll all squint. Uh, this is what we call a cause and effect diagram. And your question is posed here. The question you're trying to address or solve. The uh, factors that contribute to the problem are brainstormed and identified in the bubbles. And then in the detail here, everything that's going on that contribute to that cause of that problem is detailed. So what you end up having is a rapidly developed analytical tool that lets you get a handle on what's going on. And you can do this with a pad and paper. I'm a computer geek. I've been in the computer field for um, that long. And uh, actually over half a century. And uh, it's, I do a lot of this, so I use a lot of software. This happens to come out of a software package called SmartDraw. Uh, and it's fantastic to Every chart that you see will have come out of SmartDraw. But we, what this represents is there are 10 factors here, 10 causes of the need for management to transition into leaders. We are now undergoing, we actually look in the states, at about 12 crises occurring simultaneously. Um, I've been around for seven decades and plus, and I've never seen that many crises going on simultaneously. Have any of you? You're not sure. You didn't look. <laughs> if they were going on, they did not have the profound effect that the crises that are occurring now have. And that makes this a very difficult period and a need for change. Uh, I won't go into all of these now, but um, practice with this. Like I said, the pencil and paper, the concept, 
That's a problem you're trying to address and trying to think about, get your mind around. That's the causes of the problem and you can brainstorm it. And these are the details that cause the cause, okay? Uh, if you practice with this over a short period of time, you can get a better handle on your environment, whatever that environment is. Um, and this is what we call a SIPOC diagram, and it has a very mysterious name. But SIPOC means supplier, input, process, output, customer. Very uh, mystical. What this says is that the Federal Reserve in the United States and the Bush administration were the suppliers of the financial crisis were the suppliers of the mortgage crisis, and were the suppliers of the housing crisis. Now, I'm not bashing the Bush administration. Um, did I like Mr. Bush? No. Um, but the fact is that we have these crises that resulted from the policies that were started not by Bush, but by Reagan, that made it possible with other things that the Bush administration did for this crisis to occur. Another supplier, Wall Street, uh, AIG, the uh, insurance giant, <coughs> and the mortgage industry brought us the market crash and the mortgage meltdown. That's five crises simultaneously, all associated with the financial industry. Uh, small businesses need lines of credit to stay open. Nonprofit organizations that deliver services to a large group need cash flow. And sometimes they need to visit their local bank to get continuation funds while they're waiting for that check that's uh, three months later. The banking industry brought us the credit crisis, which has been evolving and is ongoing um, and has yet to surface as the true crisis that it is. And with that one, I think, um, even though we have attempted to save the banks with uh, a trillion dollar bailout, um, the banks have since taken action that I think will probably cause many of them to go out of business. And they're probably doing the same thing here. One of the things they did with credit cards, uh, we have about a trillion dollars of credit card debt in the United States. And what they've done is said, okay, we've got a problem. We're going to cut back the credit cards. Okay. Uh, and we're going to hike the interest to, if you're a prime seven or eight hundred score, credit score person, we're only going to up it to about 19%. But if you're not, if you've got a 699 credit score below, we'll up it to 24%. And if it's under 600, we'll up it to 30%. Um, does that sound like a good business plan again? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not Yeah, well, you know, the United States is a uh, we like to think that we're the world greatest and all of that, but we copy your stuff and then send it back to you with our, after we screw it up. So uh, you'll find that as we go through this, you'll think you're in California instead of until you walk outside the train. Uh, health insurance. These people have national health insurance. Many of you say, well, you know, you got to wait forever. But at least if you lose a job, you still got health insurance. United States, if you lose a job, oh well, hopefully you'll still be alive when you find a job. Uh, real estate industry, same thing going on, the housing crisis, and the, um, a massive drop in value of housing because of predatory lending and all of that. And finally, the school district, a uh, tremendous, tremendous crisis. The city of Detroit, the school system has been taken over by the state, the whole system. Um, a few other cities went bankrupt. 
school system is taken over by the state. Other school systems have a relatively high dropout rate. As a matter of fact, in the United States, there's a dropout every 